In this video, we'll do an example of numerical integration related to generating the shear and moment diagrams of a beam. It's common for a beam to be loaded with a shear force, which I'm going to simplify as just a vertical force acting on the beam. It's usually denoted V. When the shear force is applied, it creates a torque, or bending moment, M, within the beam. We can make what's called a shear moment diagram, which plots the shear force and bending moment across the length of the beam. Shear moment diagrams are the bread and butter of structural engineering. They can be used to easily determine the type, size, and material of a member in a structure so that a given set of loads can be supported without failure. I guarantee you'll be drawing plenty of shear moment diagrams in your statics, deforms, and mechanical design classes. Suppose we know that the shear force on a beam is V of x equals 0.25 x squared plus 5 newtons. It turns out that the moment is more or less the integral of the shear force. In this problem, we want to estimate m at x equals 12 meters. We'll obtain what is essentially a very high accuracy estimate of m using MATLAB's built-in integral function. This is actually a very good substitute for the analytical value of m. Then, we'll estimate the value of m using the composite trapezoid rule with a different number of segments and compare the results to the integral function. Let's move to MATLAB to get started. We're given a function v of x, so we should instinctively plot it. I already coded in v of x as an anonymous function. The shear force is parabolic with a wide opening and an initial vertical offset of 5 newtons, as expected. We now need to compute m at x equals 12 meters using the integral function. Before we do that, I'm going to get a little ahead of myself. Part B of the problem wants us to compute m via the composite trapezoid rule using various amounts of trapezoids. This will require a for loop to iterate through all the different number of segments, so I'm going to pre-allocate some storage variables and define some parameters at the same time as when we do part A. The n vector holds the different number of segments we'll use in part b. The m vector will hold each moment estimate for each case of m. The error vector will hold the percent error of each m estimate compared to the result we get from the integral function. Speaking of which, this line calls the integral function. The integral function accepts three arguments. The function to be integrated, the lower limit of integration, and the upper limit of integration. The function must be supplied as an anonymous function, which we thankfully have. The lower and upper limits are just scalars. In this case, we're integrating the anonymous function v, which is our shear force, over the length of the beam, so from 0 to l equals 12 meters. We can see that the result is 204 newton meters. The integral function is good enough to basically call this the analytical value of m. Of course, it's not technically the analytical value because the algorithm uses a bunch of numerical methods under the hood, but it turns out that if you solve for the integral analytically, you get the exact same answer. We'll use this value to judge the accuracy of the various composite trapezoidal rule estimates we'll get. In each iteration, we'll determine how many data points to use for each trapezoid, form the trapezoids, apply the trapezoidal rule via the trapz function, compute the percent error, and then generate the shear moment diagram. To generate the shear moment diagram, we'll use the cum trap z function. I'll explain why in a bit. For now, let's write the for loop. This line determines the step size of each segment. 
It determines how many data points each trapezoid should span. For example, when we only use one trapezoid, the step size of the trapezoid is 12 over 1, or 12. This means that the trapezoid starts at x equals 0, is incremented by 12, and ends at l, which is also 12. Therefore, the x vector for this iteration contains just two elements, 0 and 12. We feed the x vector and the corresponding v values into the trap z function to obtain our moment estimate, then compute the percent error. To make the shear moment diagram, or I guess I should say the moment diagram since we already have the shear diagram, we issued the QMTRAP-Z function. The QMTRAP-Z function is closely related to TRAP-Z. While TRAP-Z returns a scalar representing the final integration value, QMTRAP-Z can be used to return the cumulative value of the integral as it's being calculated, hence its name. We can see that mx has two elements, 0 and 276. The 0 comes from the fact that we haven't yet integrated at the start. The 276 comes from the x and v of x vectors. If we apply the trapezoidal rule to this data, we get the base times the average height, which is 12 times the quantity of 5 plus 41 over 2, or 276. This is evident on the lower subplot of the figure. We can see that the moment diagram is just a diagonal line containing only the two data points we have, 0 and 276. Since m is the integral of v, v is the derivative of m with respect to x. If you visually differentiate v of x, it'll look nothing like what we currently have. This is because we only used one trapezoid to estimate m. Recall that the moment using the integral function returned 204 newton meters, so we're definitely off by quite a bit. Let's continue to the next iteration and see what happens. Now we're using two trapezoids, so we need a step size of 12 over 2 equals 6 meters. The x vector will go from 0 to 6 to 12, and our new moment estimate is 222 newton meters, so we're getting closer to the 204 we desire. The mx vector has three elements, 0, 57, and 222. The 0 is self-explanatory. The 57 comes from applying the trapezoidal rule to the first two elements of x and v of x. The 222 comes from applying the trapezoidal rule to the last two elements of x and v of x. We also add the 57 from before. Hopefully this clarifies what the QMTRAP-Z function does and how it differs from TRAP-Z, which only gave us the 222. This is all shown on the moment diagram as the red line. Although we only used one more segment, it's clear that the moment curve is starting to slightly resemble the derivative of v of x. I think you get the idea, so I'm going to remove the breakpoint and run the entirety of the code. We can see that the bending moment curve looks increasingly curvier with each iteration, which is what we want. This is because the QMTRAP-Z function works better with more data points. We increase the number of segments in each iteration, and the moment estimate got increasingly closer to 204 newton meters as a result. Notice how the percent error is roughly quartered in each step. This is consistent with the fact that the trapezoidal rule has a truncation error on the order of the square of the step size, so having the width of each trapezoid should cut the error by about 4. We can see this in the second figure, which is the plot of the percent error versus n. It looks more or less like the function 1 over x squared, which matches the theory. This concludes the shear moment diagrams problem. We learned how to use the integral, trap-z, and QMTRAP-Z functions, and explored the effect of the number of trapezoids on the accuracy of the integral estimate. See you next time.